Hello again, welcome back to Hangar 51. So, uh, kind of screwed this video up a little bit. Um, I'm doing a voiceover because I my mic wasn't turned on. <laughs> so, yeah, and the, the voice doesn't match the lips right now, but you're not going to see my face here in a minute anyway because all I'm going to be showing you is the airplane. So, um, so all I'm explaining here is that uh, I'm opening the box. This is the B-17 from Hobby King. Been waiting a long time for it, and uh, it finally came in. Really excited to open the box. And um, as you can see, the box is unopened, and uh, we're about to cut the tapes and uh, and do an unboxing. So, uh, so I'm just going to cut it open here, and uh, we're, we'll get into it. And like I said, the voiceover here, I know is kind of stupid right now, but I'm going to stand up like right now. Okay, so now you can't see my lips anymore. So from here on out. It's pretty much going to match um, the unboxing. So, so I'm just cutting the tapes here and uh, pulling it open. And uh, yeah, just and, and I, I recommend this, guys. Uh, unbox whenever you do an unboxing, videotape it. Even if you're not going to put it on YouTube, just record it. Set your phone up, put a camera up, whatever you got to do, because just like in this situation where I've got a uh, defective, eh, it's a missing part. Um, it, it, this will prove that, you know, it was missing when I opened the box. And, and that's just so helpful if you have to make a claim for everybody, you know, because, you know, they, they you know, Hobby King's not going to give me a hard time about this because when they see the video, they're going to see when I pull it out of the bag that the wing, the one wing tip is missing the, the lens for the nav light it's not a huge deal but uh but anyway we're gonna um but that's why you know if i hadn't done this unboxing i wouldn't have the evidence to show that it came out of the box that way so that's why i highly recommend guys if you're gonna do anytime you buy an airplane videotape the unboxing it and uh and that way if you have a problem you can uh, always you know send the video to uh, whoever you bought the plane from to verify your story that it came out of the box damaged. You know, damaged, missing a part, whatever. So um, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just showing that I'm pulling it out of the box. And uh, this is, uh, I'm also, I, I happen to mention here that this particular box is not a display box. Which is okay, I guess, because I guess Hobby King doesn't sell the stores direct, so they really don't need to make a display box. You know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be on display in a store anywhere, and if it is, it's not Hobby King's problem. They, uh, you know, they, and so this saves them a lot of money. I mean, you think about all the printing to put a pretty box, you know, especially a colored box, out, and the only person that gets to see the box is you. Which I save the boxes. But um, it does save them money, and you know, so it's a it's a good thing. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I do like the display boxes myself. I keep them. Um, I'm, I've got a plan for that that you'll see eventually on my channel. But um, right now, uh, uh, I'm not doing. Uh, I haven't started it, but I have a whole bunch of display boxes from uh, from new airplanes. So so here I'm just taking the uh, cardboard lid off of it. It's a two-piece box. If you look in the middle, you can see that the uh, foam has got a split in it. They glued together. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Just pointing out some uh, observations I made during the unboxing that it was a you know two-piece um, box, well boxed, no damage. The plane's not damaged. It's just missing a lens, and it was missing the lens when they put it in the bag because the lens was not in the bag either. Um, so uh, so there you go. I've got the lid off now, and, and everything's taped in really well, very well boxed. Um, so now I'm going to cut all the tapes. And what I'm also saying at this point is I'm telling you guys to uh, um, get rid of the tape. You know, get rid of all the tape. Because I, I one, time, one day I did an unboxing, and I left the piece of tape hanging on the side of the box. And... When I pulled the part out of the bag, it, it 
taped itself to the piece of tape that was dangling. And when I pulled the tape off the, the plane, it took the paint off. And I'll tell you, to, to, to ruin a brand new airplane like that, it just breaks your heart. So that, that's why I say I, I'm taking all of the uh, the tapes off. So what I'm explaining here is that the and the cells on the on the bone motor are painted to the inside like that, so that the um, the silver on the uh, airplane isn't blinding the reflection isn't blinding the pilots. So they on purpose paint the in inboard side of the engine facing the cockpit green so that you don't have that bright silver reflecting off the engine sitness cells and blinding the pilots. So I'm kind of explaining that here. And then I'm going over that the motors are, you know, not installed. You have to install them. And you can see the layout of where everything is in the box. And, um, you know, well packaged. I, I had no problem with the packaging. They did a great job. Uh, very happy with it. Um, very happy with the airplane. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm, I just uh, a little upset that the one lens cap, uh, lens cover's missing. Um, and uh, it, it's not the one, this wing. If you can actually see through the bag, that the lens on the nav light on the wingtip is there on this particular wing. Uh, it's the wing underneath that's missing, and and you'll see that when we get to that part of the box, the unboxing. So, um, all right. So let's get to cutting these tapes. And, uh, you know, I'm just talking about the, the wires coming out of the wing. All the wires are there. Um, doesn't have a one junction plug like a lot of companies have gone to. Not a big deal. Don't care. Not, you know, it is a nice thing to have, especially if you have to take the wings off to transport the airplane. Um, I generally do not have to, so I'm okay with it. Um, so, all right, so here I am, and this is where I'm, I'm going to take all the tape off and fold it up and throw it away so that I'm never, not going to accidentally, uh, you know, get a, when I get the part of the airplane out of the bag, I'm not going to get it touched on a tape and wreck it. So, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm explaining that I'm purposely taking all the tape all the way off so that I won't have that problem again. The one plane I ruined really, really broke my heart when I did that. I, I was so mad at myself for not taking the extra second to just pull the tapes off and get them out of the way so that it wouldn't do what I did. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. That's why you're going to see me pull all the tapes off and uh, get rid of get rid of them so that there's no chance that a piece of the freshly painted airplane is going to uh, touch leftover tape that happened to be laying around. Um, I do this on all my unboxings now. After I ruined the one airplane, I, I make sure I, I that's never going to happen again. You know, so I take a little extra time pulling the tapes off. You know, and I apologize for that. You know, it does make the video a little longer, and you don't need to see this. But at the same time, I want to make sure that um, for warranty purposes, like this particular airplane. Um, it, it's going to pay off. This is this is what Hobby King needs to see to uh, um, warranty my my claim. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do about it or what they're going to want to do about it. Um, but you know, I really don't want them to replace the whole wing. I just hope they'll you know either take a lens off of a wing they have there or or contact the factory and have them send me a lens. And I don't mind waiting for it. I'm not in a hurry. You know, as long as they're going to tell me they're going to send me the lens, that's fine. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to fly it without it. The, the, the only reason I'm upset is that the LED is not going to shine outward um, because it won't have that lens to deflect the light all around. The, the light on that wing is just going to shine straight out without that lens on it. And that's going to ruin the the visual effect of that particular light. And I really love the lights, so it's kind of important to me. Uh, I, I really do, you know. Uh, the lights are a big deal to me. I, I just think it adds so much to the airplane 
that uh, I really love, love an airplane that has a lot of lights on it. I think that's the, the biggest difference between a, an okay model and a really, really nice model. Um, I, I think the lights are important. And I, I know it doesn't add much to the price of the airplane at all. These LED, these, these, uh, LED lights are cheap, very cheap. But they add so much to the, the scaleism of the plane, the look of the plane, and just everything about it. Um, so, so I'm a big fan of the lights. I know a lot of people don't care about them, but I'm one of the I'm one of the idiots that does. <laughs> I, I really like the lights. So, if I, if I have a, a choice to buy a plane with lights and without, and it, and and other than that, if they're pretty much the same airplane, I'll buy the one with the lights, even if it's a little more money. And if it's a lot more money, then maybe not. But uh, but if it's just a a, a small price difference. To get the, the same exact airplane with lights versus without, I'll, I'll pay the extra for the lights. Okay, I think there's only one more tape to cut here, or maybe that's all of them. Uh, well, that might be all of them. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're ready to. I think we're ready to go ahead and start unbagging parts and go over them as I unbag them. So uh, we're. I don't know what I'm. I don't remember what I was doing at the moment here. Um, and I didn't, didn't upload this immediately cause I was busy with other things. I'm so busy right now. And, uh, so when I went to upload it and I was, you know, editing it, I realized that I must've had the mic off for some reason. That's the first time I've ever done this. Uh, there was no audio. So I'm doing a voiceover to correct that problem. And because you can't see my face. There's, you know, it's not going to look stupid that uh, my my voiceover isn't matching my lips because <laughs> you can't see my lips. <laughs> oh, I know what I was doing there. I was, uh, I, I put my light back up. There was a, I have a studio light off to the side and it was, it was not in position. So I went and moved it. So now I, you'll notice it's a little brighter on the left side of your screen. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, everything's pre-bagged, really, really nicely done. Um, and everything was taped in, so there's absolutely no damage to anything on the airplane, you know, other than the light being missing. And, uh, you'll see that here in a minute. Um, so the first thing I'm pulling out is the tail section. This does glue on, there's no screws, it glues on. And, uh, foam hinge. Very nice. It, you know, the quality is very good. The paint is very nice, but it's, um, their foam, um, you can see the cells of the foam through the paint. Um, FMS and a few other companies now are, have gotten their painting down to where they actually completely bury, and you can't tell it's a foam airplane anymore. The finish on them are just amazing. Uh, not a deal breaker. I don't mind that the foam is visible. It, it that's not a deal breaker for me. They've got panel lines, and you know the the rudder on this on the real plane is fabric covered, so it's got those ribbings in it, and they put the ribs on the uh, on the foam. So it, it's a very scale looking airplane, and you, once you get 10, 15 feet away from it, you can't see those cells, the foam cells anymore anyway. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, sure, I like the better paint job but but by no means is that a deal breaker i think the plane looks great very happy with it i've been waiting a long time for it and i'm super happy with it and it came with an instruction manual which um they have not hobby king you always get your manuals online and uh this one actually came with an instruction manual in the box and uh, two liveries decal liveries i'll go over that in a minute here when i when i pull that out um yeah, it's got a retractable landing gear. It's got a spring type main gear. It's got then that's what I'm winding my finger because I'm demonstrating a spring. So it's a spring uh, shock absorbing main gear. Um, very nice. Um, the tail wheel is not retractable, and I'll probably say that when I get to the few slides, but. Uh, all the control horns are on. The uh, linkages are all connected. Everything's ready to go. You know, I have to I have to install the motors, 
but the ESCs are installed. The wires are right there coming out of the wing at the motor, you know, each motor. So super easy to plug the motors in, put the, uh, um, you know, plug the wires in and then put the cowlings on. So super easy. There are all the wires to go for everything, the lights. You got retracts, you got flaps, you got ailerons, you got two separate motors, um, you know, and the retract and everything. So that's all with that big bunch of wires is all, all everything you have to plug in. And uh, but again, not a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the model. I have not built it yet at the time I'm doing this. Um, been too busy to build it, and I have to get the camera set, set back up to do a build video. Uh, I'm right there. I'm showing the scale exhaust. Uh, those those vents on the back of the wing there are exhaust ports um, for each motor. And if you wanted to weather it, you would put some you know black streaks coming out of those to represent you know exhaust coming out of the wing. And that's what those are for there. And it's nice details. Very nice. Very nice airplane. Um, you know. Uh, Hobby Kings just keep stepping their game up. I'm telling you, their, their stuff gets better and better. I'm so, so impressed now with what Hobby King's doing um, from the old days. I started buying from Hobby King when they first opened, and it was a nightmare. But, you know, this is the whole new Hobby King. They're, they're doing such a good job now. Their customer support is fantastic now. Uh, people are very friendly, easy to talk to. It wasn't like that in the beginning. Um, so I'm really, really happy with Hobby King now. And if you're one of those guys that don't like Hobby King, I'm telling you, it's it's different now. You should definitely give them a try if you haven't bought from because the quality of the stuff's better and the company's attitude is 100% better now. So so here I'm just going over the the manual and it's 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 uh, it's a nice manual. It's got a nice colored sheet on the front. They show both versions, the green version and the silver version. And then they show the liveries and everything inside. So you got pictures of the livery. Um, there's four different liveries, but you only get the two that go with the silver plane. They don't put the uh, green liveries in the box because they go with the green plane. So I got two separate liveries that I can pick from that go on the silver version. And then the, if you buy the green one, you'll have two different liveries for the green one. And... Um, you know, there's good uh, drawings inside. I don't believe there were. I mean, I've got the real the manual here. Hang on a second. I don't think they're pictures. I think they're draw all drawings, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, yeah. So everything is just drawings, but they're very nice drawings. They explain. There's some, you know, nice English verbiage here, not Chinglish. You know, it's it's very nicely done. It's a very nice manual. Not not hard to follow. Um, so I think they did a really good job on that and, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So, um, you know, and like I said, usually you have to go online, uh, on their page to get to the manual. This is the first plane I've bought from Hobby King in God, like five years now that came with the manual in, in the box. Usually you have to go online and either download it or just, you know, and print it or just, you know, build the plane off, off your computer screen. So, but yeah, super nice manual. Very happy with that. And then here's the deliveries. There's two separate sheets. And then there's a little couple of little cards. There's a shoe, shoe, shoe baby, which is what I'm holding in my hand there. And it's, it's a half naked girl, uh, no boobs. It's her back and, uh, and then legs in a bathing suit. Um, you know, so it's very tasteful. Nice. This is, this is Priel's pretty scale uh, nose art for a B-17 back in the war. Um, and this is one of the more tasteful ones where she's not naked, you know, bare breasts and, you know, that kind. So, and then there's another one. The other livery has the Ace of Hearts um, on the other livery. And there you can see it right there in the, and it's not showing up here in color so much, but the Ace of Hearts is in red. I, I know you can't tell that looking at the video here, but it is... There you can see there now it is it is red, so that's the second livery on the other the other livery sheet, and um, so so those are your choices there. Um, 
not a big difference, slight difference. You know, you got the big U or the big A, and uh, the bars, the stars and bars are are sized slightly different also, um, and they're colored different. The one sheet, the blue is a bluer blue, and the other sheet it's so dark it almost looks black. So the the A's, um, this is the one they're very dark. They're they're almost black, and then on this one they're they're more blue. I know that's not really showing up on the camera here, but I'm just explaining that this sheet here has definitely got uh, the, 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 the blue around the star is a much brighter blue than the other one. Okay, so let's get rid of these. Let's move those out of the way, and we're going to get to the other wing. Now, this is where we're going to show you the wing that's missing the lens. And... Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I didn't point that out in the video when I did it because I didn't notice it at first. Um, I'm pointing it out now because they asked me to post the video and I hadn't put it up yet. So I have to do the voiceover. But if you look in the bag right there, you can already see that the lens is missing because it, it sticks out at the end of the wing. It's not flush. And you can see that there's, there's nothing sticking out there. The black... The black lens there is, is missing. You, know, you got the black area where the light is, but the actual lens itself is missing because it protrudes out of the out of the wing. And uh, I went back and looked in the bag. It's not in the bag, um, unfortunately. I wish it was. Um, so that's the only problem I had with the unboxing. Everything else went smoothly, no problems. Everything looks great. Um, and again, you can you can kind of see the, the the foam cells and you know when the light hits it just right. But overall, it's just a beautiful silver wing, no damage on anything. Everything came out great, and uh, you know it's just a good finish. It got uh, I think those are simulated gas caps. Those five round circles. I think those are supposed to be gas caps. Uh, I'm assuming. And then there's the big pile of wires. The ESCs are in the wings with vents. Uh, you can see them there. There's vent poles there between the cells. And that's where the ESCs are. So you're going to get good air to those for cooling. And that should be no problem. Okay, so the next thing I think is the... I think I take out the horizontal stabilizer now, I believe. Um, not ready to take the wing out yet, or the fuselage out yet. Um so there's the horizontal at the very bottom of the box. And then you can see the four engine cowls and the four propellers to the right. And then there's a bag of parts and a foam. The chin, the chin turret is uh, over to the left. And then there's a big, the ball turret that goes underneath is in there too. Okay, so there's the stabilizer. Again, you know, all the ribbing is on the, the elevator because that is cloth covered on the real plane um, so you know you have that ribbing to hold the cloth up and that's very scale the trim tab is also shown in there so very nice and I'm showing you how big this thing is that that, that thing is longer than my arm okay you know I'm five foot six so my arm is you know a little less than half my height and uh, that that's that horizontal stab is is uh, is longer than my arm, so it, it's a big airplane, guys. 1875 is the wingspan, 1875 millimeters. So it's a big airplane, you know. So it, it, it's and it's really it's very light. Um, so there the uh, um, the elevators are separate. There's two separate uh, rods push rods going through the fuselage. The servos are mounted uh, in the fuselage. And uh, so, um, you know, they're all installed. The uh, I'm breaking the, uh, flexing the foam hinge. I always do that, guys, before you uh, um, hook up your servos. You don't want the servos doing that. It's really hard on the servo to, you know, to have to break that, you know, break that in, you know, to get the foam flexed. So always flex it first, you know, make it nice and free before you hook your servos up. I highly recommend that. Um, I've even taken planes that come out of the box 
with those already connected and sometimes I'll unhook them just to make sure that somebody had flexed them before they hooked up the push rods um, just to keep you from burning out a servo. It's a minor little thing to do in, in a pre-flight just to make sure you don't have a problem. So, so that's all set. So we're going to move that out of the way. And there's one of the engine cowls. And again, there's that one spot that's painted green. That uh, that's the part that points toward the the uh, cockpit. So not to blind the uh, pilots with the sun reflecting off of them. Um, so uh, and they're very nice. They're they're are, they're a hard plastic. They got a dummy engine cell in them, and the and the engine cell is pretty. Uh, you know, it's pretty nice. You know, it, it could be detailed better, but I'm I'm not complaining at all it looks fine you know it's not just a flat piece of plastic in there with a drawing of an engine it's actually rounded cylinders with cooling fins and you know they look pretty nice and and these are not very heavy they're very light so they're not going to drag the plane down in any way very nice uh, the propellers are fine you know it's the same prop that's used on uh, the I think the mule you know and the uh the uh, King Twin use the same props, so it's a, and they give you an extra set of props. You get one extra left, you know, rotating, and one extra right rotating prop. So you got, you get six props in the in the box. I think that's awesome. I think anytime they they give you extra props, or even one extra prop if it's a single engine plane, is just a wonderful thing, and I'm very happy with that. I think that's a great thing for them to do. Um, just an extra bonus. Um, like I said, guys, uh, Hobby Kings come a long way. They, they, they're, they're, uh, their quality and the, the thoughtfulness. There's the ball turret. Um, it does not rotate, but it does, um, you know, it, it doesn't rotate like a, the turret, uh, but it does swing. The guns can swing down, so you can position the guns forward, backwards, straight down. Obviously, you couldn't take off if they were straight down, but, but the turret does move, and you could put a servo on it and make it movable from the, you know, the radio if you wanted to do that. Um, but the way it comes, it does not, you know, the turret part doesn't work, so you can't spin it around, but you can position the guns up and down, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, the only thing I would have changed here... Um, I wish they'd have put magnets on this and magnets on the plane so this would be held in with magnets because there's two servos underneath this. Your your rudder and elevator servos are underneath this. This is the cover. And if you glue this on and then you have to replace a servo, you're going to have to tear it off. So I am going to put magnets on mine. I'm going to add them to this because I think it's just going to make it a much nicer setup and much easier to maintenance the airplane if I ever have to. And it's so easy to add the magnets. I think that's what I'm going to do. So here I'm showing the motors. These are outrunners. And, uh, you know, they should be fine. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any, you know, negativity to say about them being inrunners, outrunners. They're fine. Um, I, don't, I don't have any issues with that. I imagine the plane's going to fly fine. I've seen other videos on the old version. Now, I don't know if this is still version 2. I heard the new one was going to be version 3. It doesn't say anywhere on here that it is version 3. Um, so I, I don't know um, if there's any difference from the old model and the new one, if this has been updated. I, I couldn't say... Uh, for sure, because I, I, I don't know. I didn't have the old one, um, so I don't know if there are upgrades or not. So if you've, uh, if you've got this plane um, and you can see some of the updates from the old one, uh, comment in the bottom, please. Uh, you know, just let everybody know what they did different, what they upgraded, if they did. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys if you want to you know, put that in the comments. So that's the parts bag, which has... All your connectors, there's there's Y connectors for some of the things. There's the Y connector for the, the cells, you know, so that you only have to plug in one battery and it goes to both 
wings, which powers all four engines. So that's in here. And then there's um, some plastic bits, some extra uh, control horns. Um, there's, uh, there's two spars in here that, that put the wings together. They're little tiny aluminum spars. And there's a, the other part of the aluminum spar is in the wing. So all this does is connect them together, and it looks like they're bent to put some dihedral in the wing. So, uh, yeah, so they, they have a bend in them. That's, that's where the dihedral comes from. So that's all nice, very nice. Okay, so here I'm pulling the fuselage out of the bag. Uh, as you can see, the, the tail wheel is also a spring, one of those wounded spring old-style uh, tail wheels, steerable tail wheel. Don't care that, you know, it's fine that it doesn't retract. Not a big deal. Um, you know, but just a very nice. Um, so the upper turret uh, doesn't turn either. It's just molded in. But it does, uh, you, but there is a place to put the guns. They give you, I think, what was it, nine guns that are separate, and you put them where you want them. You can, the, the, the windows on the, the side uh, um, I don't want to call them bolsters because they're not but the 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 turrets are the the gun placements on the side of the fuselage um, the plexiglass window that's there is not pre-drilled now they give you um, some o-rings so you drill a hole pop the o-ring in it and then you can put the gun through the o-ring and you can put it at whatever angle you want to do it at. So it's up to you to do that. They don't pre-drill it. Um, they leave it up to you. So if you don't want to put the guns in, you don't have to. If you do want to put them in, um, I think, what is there, eight or nine? Two, four, six, eight. Eight guns, extra guns. So if you notice the top turret does not have any guns in it, you, you again, you have to drill the holes and put the guns in uh, and then there's a place to put guns on the back on the tail so if you've got back there see that's the bag of the guns and there's four o-rings in there i don't know why they only gave you four um because there's eight guns but they only give you four o-rings and that doesn't turn or anything it's just you just have to uh you know I think the guns are facing backwards there. Yeah, they are. So you, you, that's how you'd mount the guns on that. It's just have them facing backwards. And then there's the tail, what I'm looking at right now. And you can put uh, two guns coming out the back. Two guns, one on each side. Two guns in the ball turret, uh, the top turret. The ball, guns are already in the ball turret. Oh, excuse me, the ball turret. And then I, you can put two guns out the front somewhere. Um, you know, in the bomb bomber's uh, window. Um, again, it, there's no holes drilled in that the bomber, you know, glass on the front. Um, so if you want to put a gun through there, you can. Totally up to you. They, they give you that option, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm fine with that. If you want to keep it clean and don't want to put the guns on it, you know, there's that you're, you're good to go. But they give you the guns if you want to put them on. So. Um, so this, there's no, that doesn't screw in at all. It's, it's all just glued in. Um, and so is the horizontal. I kind of wish that it was a screw in. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. If you damage it and you want to replace that piece, if you've glued it in, make sure you use contact cement. Do not glue it in with epoxy or CA because you cannot get it out if you do it that way. So you don't want to do it that. If you use contact cement, it'll be a bit of a fight, but you can get it off. You can remove it from the fuselage to save the fuselage, or if you've damaged the fuselage, you can save the tail feathers. You know, by gluing it in with, with contact cement, then you can get it back out. You might have to destroy the other part of the plane, the fuselage, which is what you're replacing anyway, if, if you're going that way or the other way. You might have to destroy that piece to save the other, but you can save the piece that you're saving and destroy the other one, but you can get it apart. If you CA it or epoxy it, 
you can get it apart. I mean, you can sit there and grind and sand and file and, and you know, and then have to repaint, you know, to get it apart. But it's just not worth it. Uh, I'm telling you, don't just just use. I, and the instructions sometimes even tell you to use CA. Don't ever use CA. Just use contact cement. It, you, I promise you, you're never going to blow a piece of the airplane off that was, you know, put on with contact cement. Yeah, I guarantee you, it will hold. So, uh, so there are the rods coming out of the back of the fuselage. You know, the one up high is the rudder, and then there's one on each side for the uh, elevator because there's the, the elevators are separate. And there's the hole on the bottom of the plane. I was just showing you where the uh, rudder and elevator servo are, and how the uh, ball turret is going to fit. I think I put it down in the gap. Yeah. So, so the ball turret goes in there and covers up those servos, but you know. You'd have to glue it in if you put it in their way, and and then they're the servos, and that's uh, you know that's going to be hard to get it back off if you have to service that. Not impossible, especially if you just use a tiny bit of contact cement. But I just think putting it in with magnets would be a much better, you know, way to do it. And then if I ever have problems, I won't have any trouble pulling the ball turret off. Um, and these earth magnets today are so strong that it's not going to come off. Um, it'll, it'll stay on there. You're not going to lose it. Um, so anyway, so uh, you know, again, very happy. Uh, it's it's a it's a beautiful airplane. Um, very happy with the, the the build quality, the construction of it. Um, it's got a nice battery bay. It does run on 3S. Now, um, I don't know what size 3S batteries I'll put in it, but uh, um, they're saying a 2200. Um, well, it says two 2200s, which I'm not sure why, because they've got a Y connector here. Um, oh, okay. Well, yeah, the Y connector is designed to... Well, no, it's designed to only plug one battery into it. So I don't know why they're saying two 2200s. I'll probably use a 4,000, you know, a three-cell 4,000 pack to fly the plane. So, um, so here I'm just saying, you know, comments at the bottom. You know, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we'll see you on the next review. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, that'll do it, guys. Thanks for watching.